All right. Welcome to another episode of the Consistency Corner podcast, Unfiltered Fridays. I'm really excited to have my friend Kathy back on the show today. Kathy, is this your third time being on the podcast? Oh my gosh. Yes, it is because this is my second Unfiltered Friday. And then we did one like quote regular episode. Yes. yes. Fun, fun, fun. So what yes. we're actually going to do, you guys are in for a really fun session here is Kathy and I are going to do a Instagram nine grid strategy session. So yes. you're going to get the behind the scenes, look behind the curtain of what it's like to have a strategy session with me. And hopefully some of the questions that I ask her, you can reflect on and journal for your own business. And then if you're like, okay, I still really want your help and your input, you know what it's <laughs> like for when we yeah. work together for either a done for you nine grid, or if you've got my templates, how a strategy session can help you with those templates and kind of give you that extra personalized support to make your own nine grid. So before we get into all of those questions, I do want to share that Kathy put up a nine grid back in February. We're recording yes. this episode in November. You put one up in February and it's time for a refresh. So that's it why is. we're having this call today. But first, can you share with everybody a little bit about your business like yes. today and what has changed between February and now that kind of prompted yes. us to have this conversation? Yes. Okay. So I've been a health coach for many years. And so my business is basically a health coaching business. I have accountability groups. I work with women, perimenopause, postmenopause. But most recently, I have offered a program for other health coaches, what I call beginner health coaches. That's kind of where I'm niching into people that have gotten some kind of certification that they probably paid a lot of money for. And they've got knowledge, they may have a testimonial, they have a lot of passion, they want to help people, but they don't know the business side of it. I would not define myself as like some sort of highly level strategic coach. I am the every woman's coach. <laughs> But really, like, what do you do to just get started? And so I just started that program last week. Literally, was it's a four-session program. Last week was the first session. And I've got several people paid clients in it. Like, literally more people in this program now than I have had in the last two accountability groups for, you know, health coaching that I've run. And so we have been having this discussion behind the scenes of, it, you know, are we about to pivot? Yeah. <laughs> I hate that word, but it makes sense, right? It's the yeah, word. It's yeah. the word. <laughs> yeah. And we just had on the podcast the first weekend of November, we'll link this episode in the show notes, but I did an episode about like when yes. your business pivots and evolves and how to decide if it's time for a second Instagram or a new Instagram or changing no. your Instagrams, which I know Kathy's like, <laughs> no. me. and what I actually said in that episode was it's not, that's not always the answer. Right. And right. a lot of times that is going to depend upon your bandwidth yes. and your audience and a lot of different things. And so I, knowing you, knowing your business and knowing that you are starting to kind of make this pivot or explore another yeah. area. Yeah. I don't think it's time for a second Instagram today. Right. Now, could my answer change in six months? Yeah, it could. Mm -hmm. But today, I don't think so. And here's why. The new offer or the new kind of direction of Kathy as a coach for coaches, uh, right. let's right. just say, it's still new. You're still right. trying things out. You're still creating content to see what sticks. And you haven't fully decided with the... Kathy as a health coach for women and entrepreneurs, right? What your next iteration of that looks like, you know, right. so everybody just kind of knows the full background. You also work a corporate job. So you yes. are not, you know, you don't always have 40 hours to work in this business, let alone right. laying on like a second thing. So right. managing a second Instagram for me doesn't make sense right now. So then what I wanted to talk about today is like, how do we leverage the nine grid to even show the audience, whomever might be landing on your page? who you are, what you're all about and what you do, even if right. that means it's different people and different offers. Right. So you also in the last eight months launched a podcast. So yes. talk to me a little bit about that. Why do I always forget about the podcast? That's why the <laughs> podcast is not in the current nine grid. Um, so the podcast is called Fun Over 40. The idea is to really focus on the importance and talking about strength training and getting in enough protein and just having fun and the importance of community for women over 40. Yeah. And your philosophy <clears throat> around building a business 
is very similar to the way you coach around health and fitness and that take baby steps, take action, create plans and habits that you can actually do consistently. Yes. And I love that, like, from a business coaching perspective that you said, like, you know, you're targeting like the baby coaches or like a new Mm -hmm. coach or a newly certified person. Because it's similar in health and fitness. Like you're not asking somebody who's a former Olympian to work with you. Like that's not who you're trying to target. And so it makes sense that those philosophies kind of align. And from a visibility perspective, your podcast potentially can bring you new audience members through guests, through SEO. And from what I understand, you've also done like local networking and you have a big network of other coaches that you know, and you've pitched yourself to be on other podcasts. Right. So in that time, knowing that your business has gone through some evolutions and some pivots and the nine grid hasn't been refreshed in a Mm -hmm. while, that's one of the reasons that I wanted to have this conversation because people ask sometimes like, well, when I put up a nine grid, then what? Right. Well, we want to revisit it. We want to revisit it at least every three months. And, you know, after the first three months, had anything changed in your business? Not really. No. So it made sense that you didn't refresh it then and just kept it up. But then three months later, well, the podcast had launched. Right. Now three months later, we've got this other offer and other audience that we're talking to. So today we're going to dive into planning the nine grid, Kathy's new and improved nine grid. (laughs) And the other thing that people ask a lot of times, especially when it's time to refresh or put up a new nine grid is, well, what do I do with the old one? Do I take Mm. it down? Yeah. And I would say no. I would say do a transition line. So, you know, let's say we're going to post this in December. Like I'm just Mm -hmm. making updates, looking at the calendar. Maybe the first week of December, we put up three posts that are like, stay tuned. Yeah. Something's coming. Gotcha. Working on some things behind the scenes for you. Love it. And then we start to load the new nine grid. And in that transition post, you can write in the copy, hey, below is what my business looked like in the past. Yeah. Above is everything that's currently happening and everything that you need to know. And below, take a look around, like Mm -hmm. get to know me, get to Mm -hmm. know my past, get to know that how I've evolved because people do evolve. And that history has also helped make you the coach and the business owner that you are today. Right. Right. Yeah. I really appreciate, I did listen to that podcast you just recently launched or dropped or whatever, whatever the right terminology is about the pivoting and how we all evolve. And it made me feel better because, you know, it is something that I, I'm not good with change. Like in Mm -hmm. general, I struggle with change. So, which I'm sure that people could relate to a lot of people can relate to that. So, but also feeling like you've put a lot of work and effort into whatever that initial business was. And so to make a change is a, is scary. Yeah. And you're like, oh, is the last however many years you've worked on the first business a quote waste? I mean, yeah. obviously it is not. But, right. you know, feeling that way, I think it's probably very normal and probably what a lot of people would feel normal, naturally. Yeah, yeah <clears throat> for sure. And even if you take the health coaching and put it aside for three months, six months, whatever it is, and don't launch another accountability group and are not actively selling one-on-ones, that doesn't make the 20 years that you've spent health coaching (laughs) go away. Right. 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 But I think sometimes we think it does. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I even remember one time, so I worked in corporate, I worked in corporate retail, not even corporate. I was a store manager. So I worked in like frontline retail. Yes. Yes. For 15, gosh, maybe even 20 years, a a really long time. Yes. And when I made the decision to resign, I actually remember talking to my district manager at the time and being like, oh my gosh, like I've been here for so long. I've basically like grown up here. And she was like, you could always come back Yeah. (laughs) and your experience doesn't go away. Yes. Like yes. if you leave that, that experience doesn't get wiped away yeah. and now yeah. I get to take that experience with me yeah. into the next thing, which you are taking your experience as a health coach and helping people make actionable change and yes. realistic habits into building a business. A so, business. Yep. 
All right, we're aligned on what you're doing, what it needs to change. So now let's get into like actually planning the nine grid. So okay. if someone were to book a um, planning session with me, one of these one-on-one sessions, there's a form that you fill out and I ask you some questions. Kathy didn't fill that form out because I know her <laughs> and I know her business. So I didn't have her fill out the form, like full transparency, but there'd be a form where I would ask you things about like your brand colors, your brand fonts. Um, to go ahead and map out your mission, vision, values, your ideal client, your offers. So we're going to get into some of those questions before I dive into like the actual nine posts. So let's talk about mission. So okay. knowing that your business has evolved a little bit, what would you say your current business mission or even personal mission is? So like talking about being a coach for coaches, that business, mm -hmm. I would or say, oh, I would well, say, okay, or, or both. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I want to make, I want to make, um, I want to make goals achievable. That's mm -hmm. really what it comes down to. So whether it, and I would, should probably say baby step goals. I want to make, but that's how I make a goal, a larger goal achievable is by breaking it down into baby steps. Mm -hmm. Because to your point, we've talked about this before, how similar like business and fitness or health and wellness is, you know, your time blocking, your prioritizing. It's all, to me, it's just honestly almost identical in what you do. So really trying to make big, hairy, scary goals achievable through baby step actions mm -hmm. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So ultimately it's, and I think for the most part, your ideal client is a woman, whether yes. it's a female coach or a female yes. business owner and working on yeah. their health. It's support women with their, with their, with making their goals achievable by creating. And you guys are, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm not looking at the screen because I'm typing. Like this is what we're working, we're working here. Yeah, this is real, um, real life, baby. Support women with making their goals achievable by creating realistic baby step yeah. actions. Yes. Okay. And that applies to both audiences. Yes. And so the next thing we want to talk about is the vision, the bigger mm. vision for the business. And is this, this where I talk I'm, about my five million dollar months? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so not so much as your financial goals right. or even like lifestyle right. goals, which that yeah. is fine if that's what's yeah. fuel, fuel, fueling us. But I kind of think of your vision as like your personal why of like, maybe yes. the business isn't doing this today. Yes. Like, why are you putting the time into this? Why sure. are you, what's the like bigger impact that you would hope to make and want to, to make through your business? Sure. And again, I think this would be for both businesses. Like, I just love seeing that sort of like aha moment happen when, whether it be a new coach or a new exerciser, health and fitness person, client realizes that it doesn't take as much as they think it takes to make, to move mm -hmm. the needle, whether that's moving the needle and making your health better or moving the needle to grow your business, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, stopping with what I call, and this, I stole this from a, a former business coach. She calls it comparanoia, you know, stopping that comparison trap mm -hmm. that you have most likely found yourself in, whether you're comparing yourself to coaches that are more successful than you, PS, they have teams, or you're comparing yourself to, I mean, you know, you're 50 years old and you're comparing yourself to some 25 year old fitness influencer on Instagram mm -hmm. or even comparing yourself to your 25 year old self. Mm -hmm. um, so just stopping that and being real honest with like where we are mm -hmm. and how are we going to move forward? And yes, you can do it. Yeah. Like <laughs> I am curious. I think a lot sure. of the times our vision has a connection to a personal why in that mm -hmm. like it's something that we've needed to do for ourselves or try to do. Yeah, for sure. So what has that been for you? Like, what's that journey been look like of like you facing something and like figuring out that it actually is achievable and figuring out that like, okay, I can break it down, but this is yeah. what I need. What's that story? Well, it's funny because I have a story for both my business and my own like health and wellness. So for health and wellness, probably maybe opposite of some folks, but 
you know, I didn't ever have that time period of where like, I'm in my 20s and I don't exercise and I'm just have this kick ass body. Like, I just don't, I don't know who that girl is. She's not me. I've literally exercised my entire life with a fear of gaining weight. That was my motivator. So mm -hmm. definitely like not in a healthy way, like for sure. What I have learned is as I've gotten older, what I've learned is I can't exercise like that anymore. Like I just cannot physically put my body. I mean, I'm talking like three hour daily workouts, you know, like hardcore. Mm -hmm. I can't do that anymore. And you know what, Ruthie, I might be five pounds heavier. Do you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like yeah. to, for me, that was such an aha moment of like, now I will say I set my, as, as unhealthy as maybe that was, I actually set myself up for success because I spent so much time basically growing muscle. If I'm going to be, get real granular, mm -hmm. I spent so many years growing muscle that I can sort of fall back on that now. Not mm -hmm. that I'm not exercising now, but I'm not trying now in, t in my late forties, trying to build muscle because I never did it in my twenties. I'm basically now just trying to maintain. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. Okay. But then as far as my business goes, I think beginning to work with Holly, which is our, our mutual business coach and learning the thing that attracted me to her was when we started, when I started working with her, she was still working full time. So she was really doing that like eight to 10 hours a week and she grew her business. And that was kind of, again, going back to the being intentional, being strategic, strategic, blocking your time. Um, and so when I started, that was what attracted me to her was that model, if you will. And mm -hmm. then learning that, that, yes, I could actually move the needle if I knew what the heck I was doing. Yes. And if I actually blocked the time and actually did the work, maybe it was an hour a day, because that's real. That's about as much as you can give for a lot of women who are working full time and maybe, you know, have families. And I think a lot of times when women are in that situation, they think that's not enough time to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Well, it is to make a difference in your business and or in your health and wellness. I mean, an mm -hmm. hour a day is a lot of time. You can get yeah. a lot done if you know what you're doing <laughs> in that hour. You know, if not, you're going to spin your wheels and walk around the gym and look at every piece of equipment and not actually do anything. Right. Well, but if you from a business perspective, yes. you're going to sit and scroll mm -hmm. and read emails and download yes. free resources. Yes. And then be like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> yes. I'm working all the time, but my business isn't growing. Yes, totally. Right. Yeah. 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 I love that. An hour a day is plenty of time if you know what you're doing and you yes. know what to do. And yes. sometimes it takes somebody to guide you and give yes. you that support in knowing what you do. Absolutely. So, okay. I love that. So one of the things I'm doing is while <clears throat> Kathy and I are talking is like, I'm just taking notes. Like I'm listening yeah. to what she's saying. I'm writing things down and what I'm, she can do with this document afterwards is, and this is what I do when I do a done for you nine grid is I take all these notes and I literally go to chat GPT and I say, I'm going to give mm. you a bunch of information about a brand. I'm going to brain dump information. And I just literally copy paste all of these notes into chat GPT and then say, now you have that for context. Let's start working on some captions for Instagram posts that will be part of an Instagram nine grid. And then we go through each individual prompt, but the brain dump and the initial things that we go through in the brand checklist gives chat GPT the right language to use the personalization to use so that you're not starting from scratch and you're not giving, you're not asking chat GPT to be a, a mind reader because right. the input makes such a difference. So just wanted to kind of clarify why I'm doing that and why we're asking these questions. Because if you're listening, you might be like, okay, but what do I post? Like, <laughs> Get to the this, point, Ruthie. <laughs> this is the background and the important part that makes the post that much more powerful because we're going to weave this stuff in. Yeah. So the next thing that I want to talk about is brand values. So think mm. about some keywords that maybe represent some of your business values or brand values or even personal values. Can you give me an example? Yeah. So okay. one of one of my brand values is work hard and be nice. Okay. And I came and up glitter. with that and, and glitter. <laughs> Yes, and sparkle. I came, up, I came up with the the value of work hard and be nice, and and I I probably have I do have a podcast about this about choosing your brand values. We'll have to link that in the show notes too. Mm -hmm. But one of the ways to come up with one of your brand values is think about something that you want your children to remember about you. 
Okay. Or you want to teach another generation or you want to teach even your clients. Yeah. And like for me, doing the work, being willing to put the work in and being kind, like those two yeah. things together, like yeah. that's something that I want my child to remember forever. So like, that's a yes. brand value. Yes. And with that brand value, I want to attract a community that is also kind, yes. that is also willing to do the work. Um, or another example, another one in my business is cheer each other on. So like, uh, yes, yes. Community yep. over competition, collaboration right. over right. competition. So if you haven't truly defined your brand values, just think about like, okay. what are some things you always tell your clients? What are some things that you tell your nieces and nephews? What right. are some things that right. you find you're like coaching yourself on? Yes. Something? Yes. Okay. So two things pop into my head immediately. One is you think you can't, but you can. <laughs> Oh, that's very simple, but you know, so many people just don't believe in themselves, me included. I mean, it's stuff I struggle with too, so I get it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, this is not, I'm not going to say this the right way. So maybe we can flush through this one, but like, kind of like you think that you don't have anything to say or that nobody cares, especially as a coach, you have, there's a lot of imposter syndrome, you know, mm -hmm. of like, Especially someone, I mean, I have a background in, in coaching. I have a master's degree in exercise science. You know this. But there are people that might get a, some type of health coaching certification that have no background. They just maybe had some success with a program. And then, yes, they went through a training period. But there's a lot of, like, imposter syndrome. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, someone wants to work with you because, because of you. You know, there's something mm -hmm. about you, like you are mm -hmm. special, you do have a story, mm -hmm. you know, you have something of value that can help someone else, mm -hmm. like for, you know, like, so a value, of, and I, again, I have to tell myself that, again, I'm, yeah. you know, kind of think of things that I say to myself, but that I also want other women, especially, again, women over 40, especially, Mm -hmm. to believe that they have something valuable to say to the world and share mm -hmm. and teach, you know, that kind of thing. But also that they still have a lot of, if I'm thinking more of in the health and wellness space, there's still a lot of years left. Mm -hmm. You're not like downhill and there's quote, nothing you can do about your health at 48 yeah. years old or 58 or 68. You know, yeah. you're never too old to build a business. Mm -hmm. You're never too old to get healthier you know, and also start where you're at, mm -hmm. you know, that whole, like, don't compare your chapter one to somebody else's chapter 20 or whatever. I like that. That's, you know, kind of a cliche, but I really like that because again, that's very true in business, mm -hmm. especially the business that I, you know, the, the, what am I trying to say? Clients that I'm seeking to have are the beginners, yeah. you know, and again, yeah. same with health and wellness. Okay. So I mapped out just from you, you chatting, I kind of mapped out five different brand values and okay. with more time we could flush yeah, these yeah, out, yeah. work on yeah. language, literally like our good old friend, Chat GPT, also known as Chad. <laughs> I was just going to say, we'll Chad. ask Chad. <laughs> yes, we're going to ask Chad, but the five kind of overarching values that I came up with is like, you think you can't, but you can. So that's number mm -hmm. one. Number two, your story matters. You have value to add and a lot of life left to live. Yes. Um, and then number three, you're never too old to go after your goals. Number yep. four, start where you are. Don't compare your chapter one to someone else's chapter 20. And number five, baby steps can make a difference. Yes. Yes. So just again, knowing those five things, like I would input this into chat GPT and say, Kathy's brand values are these five things. Yeah. And then when we get to the individual posts, some of the prompts that I give it is write this post incorporating some of her brand values. Oh, okay. And then it Love it. Pull in yes. some of that language. Yeah. So, okay. So ideal client. And again, you have two. And so this would be something that I would tell chat GPT as we start yes. to write the post is Kathy has two ideal clients. One is a female business owner who is looking for more energy is maybe not prioritizing herself and her health and fitness because she's pouring so much into her business. Um, and then the other one is a newly, you know, certified health coach who yeah. is trying to build a business, but not really sure what to do, even though they have yes. all the certifications and yes. education. So I know your ideal client already, yes. but those are the types of things yes. that I would okay. um, put into the input. And then again, as we go through the posts and we talk about the individual calls to action, and I'll talk about my client, Amy, 
who Amy owned a bakery. And so her clients were like wholesale clients, meaning Mm. other businesses or retail clients. And so when we would write the post, we would say, we are speaking to the wholesale client or we are speaking to the retail client. And that's kind of in your point, we're like, we're going to be talking to two audiences. Mm -hmm. And so we'll craft the captions so that we're catching the attention of those different people. And in the very top of the nine grid where we like introduce you and we introduce your business, we would want to make sure that we'd say, I help these people and these people. And right. so we're being right. clear about that from the beginning. Right. So, okay. Um, t- so offers wise. So mm-hmm. with currently yep. what you have for um, health coaches that yes. you would be coaching is your like kind of four week business boot camp. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Correct. Okay. All right. And then for, yeah, for others, I have the six week accountability group, the okay. energy boosters accountability group, which right now, it, if it matters, I'm like have a wait list open right now with the idea of starting that next group in January. Yeah. And, and that's something to think about when you create yes. a nine grid is, is this offer evergreen? Right. Or is this offer have start and stop dates? And so right. how you talk about it in the language will kind of dictate those things. Right. Uh, one of our mutual friends, I worked on some nine grids stuff with her recently, and she was going to launch two things in the mm. next um, quarter. And so I was like, okay, well, what if instead of doing <coughs> a nine grid, that's all about your business, you do a nine grid about launch number one. So the mm. grid is literally all about that offer. Then you do a nine grid about offer number two. Gotcha. Like, in succession. So then when somebody hits your feed and these two offers become evergreen, they actually are living on your feed both. And yeah. so people can kind of read about them and learn about them. So again, different ways to yeah. look at them for different people. Yeah. But in terms of free resources, what you have your podcast, which is a free yes. resource. Yes. Um, and then I have my five day uh, protein challenge. Okay. So I do not have a free resource for the business boot camp as of okay. right now. So that so, might be something right. to think about. Yeah. And I know you just did, you did a podcast episode about it, right? Yes. Yes. So that could even be considered, even though it's not an opt-in, it's not a lead magnet. Yeah. It's something yeah. we can share in the grid yes. as like a yeah. value add of like, if this is you go listen to this episode and gotcha. you're literally giving some value there. Yeah. So just thinking about that. Okay. Um, any polarizing or Mm. spicy opinions that you have? Oh, I'm so, that's so hard for me. I know you're an Enneagram girl, Ruthie. So I don't know if you know that I'm a nine. So, you know, we run from conflict. (laughs) So that is one of the things that we're known for. So, um, let's see. Well, you know, I have my getting healthy isn't sexy. I don't know if that's considered crazy polarizing. You know, I'm looking at my nine grid, right? My current nine grid right now. So it's got a couple of my like, don't eat like a toddler, you know, mm-hmm. that the lift heavy stuff. Um, I mean, I don't, I think some of my more polarizing content is just the fact that I don't think you should like limit any food groups and you don't have to run 50 miles a week to get the body of your dreams. Actually, that's probably going to prevent you getting the body of your dreams, (laughs) you know, so more like going against the norm, if Mm -hmm. that makes sense, or just what, you know, especially women in their forties, we grew up with the whole, like, eat less, move more, eat Mm -hmm. less, eat less, eat less. So the whole, like, eat like a grown ass woman. That's my polarizing Mm -hmm. content. Stop eating freaking bird food and eat like a grown ass woman, you know, fuel yourself. So. And it's so funny because you and I talk all the time about the differences and the parallels between marketing and health and fitness, but I can literally take every single one of these and apply them to business coaching too. Oh, good. Don't eat like a toddler, eat like a grown ass woman. Like yeah. stop trying to consume free tips on Instagram and invest in a mentor. Yes. Like, yes. That, you know, it's the same yes. concept or like lift heavy shit, like do hard things. Yes. Try the thing. Is it hard to write an email sequence? Yeah, it's hard if you've yeah. never done it. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't get easier until we do it. And it's yes. the same way with lifting weights, you know, yes. it's, it's hard yes. at first. Yes. It gets easier when we take action. 
And definitely the getting healthy isn't sexy. You and I have talked about that before, like growing a business isn't sexy, you know, because you see, you see like, of course, on Instagram, just like anything else or on social media, you see everybody's like a role, right? Not the B roll. I don't know if that's the right way to say that, but you know what I mean? You're seeing the highlight reel yeah. and that's true, whether that's vacations or perfect dinner that I cook, mind you, I mm-hmm. ordered pizza last night, you know, that, of course, I'm not going to show you that because I'm a health coach. God forbid right. I eat pizza. Like anyway, but you know, the same with, with business too, you know, it's a yeah. lot of, oh my gosh, see- I just listened to like side, side note, but I was just listening to an Oprah interview. Um, yes. So Glennon Doyle was interviewing Oprah and Oprah was talking about the movie that she produced beloved and how it bombed. And Oprah was talking about how like, she felt like a failure and it was like, Oh my God, like even (laughs) Oprah Oprah. (laughs) can feel like a failure. And that was so interesting to hear because, you know, we put her on a pedestal and absolutely like everything she does touches to gold. And even though that, that movie, quite honestly, probably still made money. Yes. It, it may have actually lost money, like right. in the, you know, right. over some what she invested in it to produce it yes. or whatever. But like, that's the stuff that we don't hear enough about. And I yeah. actually really appreciated her like talking yes. about that. But okay. So that we would also go further down the road of like transformations when a client works with you or like what happens if they don't change. Mm-hmm. Um, building your authority. And I would kind of make notes upon like your years of experience, right. the coaches that you've invested in, the time you've invested into learning, um, those types of things. But with all of this kind of, again, brain dumping of notes, the next step would be to put all that into chat GPT and say, right. here you go, chat GPT. Here's a bunch of background information. Right. And then we're going to go through these nine posts. Gotcha. And I'm going to go through five of them here today because okay. I don't want y'all to be on this podcast for a hundred years. I don't know <laughs> for two hours. This is not a long form. <laughs> yeah, anytime I see a podcast that's over an hour, I'm immediately like, no. So we're going to keep it under an hour, but we're going to go through the five of these posts and we're going to make some notes and I'm going to walk you through. So post number one. Now this is at the top of the grid, okay. which means you post it last Last. yes so So, so top left it is an introduction post but it is also the last thing you actually post but it's who you are yeah and what do you do so i would literally go to chat gpt and say here's all of this information please write me an introduction post right that's it right right and then the caption is written and then Mm -hmm. the image could be an image of you yeah it's that simple. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is so what I have you- right now. Although um, it'll be interesting. You know, of course, I, we weren't really in that crazy. Even in February, we weren't using chat GPT. It's been like technology that quick. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Now we use it for so much. But but just to your point, I do have that already. But it, I'm sure it needs to be refreshed. I'm not saying it doesn't. But just mm-hmm. that, that was how I started before, too. Yeah. Um, so yes. And that might even be something that if you have a nine grid and you're refreshing, take your existing caption yeah. and copy paste it into chat GPT and say like, yeah. Hey, could you refine this with this updated information? Yes. yes. Or could you tweak this to also reflect yes. X, Y, Z? Yes, um, totally. Which will help you get that up and going. So then, okay. Then post number two is to like share a free resource. So to add okay. some value. So this is actually for you where I would introduce the podcast. Okay. Okay. So you have the podcast. Have you thought about how you want to leverage the podcast in terms of speaking to business owners about no. health and fitness versus coaches about building a business? I mean, I've thought about it, but that's about as far mm-hmm. as it goes. <laughs> as I'm in the shower, you know, you have your shower thoughts. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Okay. So knowing that like the podcast is still evolving and that's okay. And podcasts, just like social media content or anything can evolve and the way you structure your episodes can evolve and that's okay. But basically what you could do is like take your podcast intro and turn it into a social media post or like, Hey, on the fun over 40 podcast, we talk about X, Y, Z, like these three things. 
do you, and you make reels of your podcasts, right? Yes. Yes. So what you could also do in your caption is say, click over to the reels tab yes. for sneak peeks of each episode. That's a great idea. Love it. So then you're like, but your main call to action is to listen to the podcast. Gotcha. But you can like keep them on Instagram yes. by showing, hey, here's what we talk about on the podcast. So if you want some yeah. sneak peeks, just go over there. Gotcha. Love it. Okay. So then for post number three, this is like a humble brag or what makes you stand out, what you've accomplished or worked on or painting the picture of a future of somebody working with you. So this is where I would really start to kind of delineate mm -hmm. and I would make this a carousel post. Okay. Um, because you want to talk about how you could help business owners mm -hmm. who are looking to improve their health and fitness and how you can help coaches. Okay. And using all that content that we brain dumped into chat GPT, ask it to draw some parallels between okay. the two. Um, so you would do one carousel, but try to speak to both of those audiences. So in the caption, I would write like, Something about, you know, I've been a health coach for 20 years. Like I would mm -hmm. open with that yeah, of like building that authority. And then along with building my business and working on my own health and fitness goals while working full time, mm -hmm. I figured out it's about the baby steps. Yeah. Yes. It's about the actions that you take consistently. And once somebody tells you what to do, you can make a difference in yes. both areas. Yeah. And then your call to action could be swipe through for how I can support you in your coaching journey or your health journey. Okay. And then in the carousel, like the cover art of the carousel mm -hmm. is something like how I can help or yeah. work with it me. Doesn't, it, it might not be, se oh, ooh, this is a good one. It might not be sexy, but I can make it fun. Oh, there like, you go. Something like that. I love that. it. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah. And then when you swipe the first the first slide could be like, if you're a health coach, I offer this, I can gotcha. help you with it. Gotcha. And then you swipe again. If you're a woman who owns a business and needs some support with your health and fitness goals, I have this, I have this. Gotcha. And it could be as many slides as you need it to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and maybe even that second slide is like a, which camp are you? Keep, gotcha. slide, keep yes. swiping to, for yeah. how I can help. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, and so then number four, post number four is like an educational content with a spicy headline and maybe a quick win. I know you coach a lot from the book Atomic Habits. Yes. So I would think here the graphic could be like a quote from that book. Okay. Potentially. Yeah. And then the caption could be like that walk one hour a day, you yeah. know, something yeah. really yeah. simple that they can do to get started with that like yes. encouragement to just get started. Yeah. Love it. Okay. And again, you can write in the caption. If you're working right. on your business, here's what yeah. you're doing. If you're, you're working on your health, on your... here's yep. what that looks like. Yep. Love it. Post number five. So this is the center of the nine grid, which is yes. like the high priority how to work with me. Now we kind of did that in post number three. three. Yep. But post number three was more about building your authority. Okay. And how you specifically could help because of the experience that you have. Mm -hmm. Post number five is a little bit more about like the how. Okay. So post number five is probably more about the offers. The offers. Like, yep. Got it. If you're a health coach, I have a four week business boot camp. Yeah. If you're looking to work on your health and fitness, we've got an accountability group. And yep. again, a carousel post here. Yeah. Okay. 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 And then post number six, we'll go ahead and finish out this line. Um, again, this is like a quote or an image. And we'll talk about the design in a second, but the intent of this post is really 
what happens if you don't change? Gotcha. What happens if you keep doing what you're doing? You know, things don't change if things don't change. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing don't changes if nothing changes. <laughs> yeah. Different. And so yeah. like, this is where you're really kind of almost selling or pitching or convincing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of that. Like, if you don't make a change, this is where you're going to be. I could yeah. help you make that change. Yes. Yes. Um, Love it. So from a design perspective, so we just talked through six of these posts. Yes. Um, the other nine, I'll just really quickly highlight. It's We've got another educational kind of like a do this, not that. Another like give them a quick win with a spicy headline. And then post number nine is like, why does what I do matter? Mm -hmm. What are the values that I bring to the table and what makes me different? And kind of like a, a final call to action of like, you know, click that link in bio to work yeah. together yeah. or whatever you want them to do. Yeah. Um, so then from a design perspective, and this is where sometimes people are like, okay, I have all the captions written, but like <laughs> now what? Yes. How do I make this into a puzzle? Yes. So yes. tell me what you did when you did your nine grid in February. How did you come up with the design? I bought it. Okay. I forget where, maybe Etsy, but anyway, okay. I went somewhere it was Etsy I'm sure I got it from our mastermind I'm sure somebody recommended some place for me to go but I feel like it was Etsy and okay. I bought I found something that was like my design I think it was like um you know Canva templates for Instagram or something was mm -hmm. like the words I used and yeah. Anyway, and I found something. Now, obviously, I changed the colors to match my brand colors, but I found like a design that was because I'm kind of fun and bright colors and that kind of thing, like retro right. a little bit looking. Um, anyway, so I bought it. That's what I did because I decided it was, I mean, literally, it was so affordable. It was ridiculous. You yeah. know, so and now you, the one that you bought, I mm -hmm. believe it was individual posts. Yes. Okay. Versus so, what I want to make. Oh, versus like the one that you have where they're like kind of connected. Yes. Mine is yes. individual posts. Yes. Yes. So the reason, and I don't think there's anything wrong with individual posts. If yeah. that's what you want to do, you can totally do it that way. The reason I like a grid design that is intentionally connected and looks like a puzzle, puzzle. Yes. or a billboard yeah. or a mini website is that when somebody lands on your page, and they see that your last post was two months ago. Right. It's very obvious from just a first glance that this is intentional and all these things go together and I should read all of these posts. Gotcha. Yep. Versus the like one at a time. Mm -hmm. I look at that very first post, see it hasn't been posted for two months or whatever and think, oh, she's not even active on Instagram. Right. Never mind. Right. And then I don't right. read any more. Does right. that make sense? Right. Yes. Yes. So you can absolutely get those templates on Etsy, Creative yeah. Market. Um, there was another one I thought of the other day that sells them too. Etsy's one, Creative Market's one. Was it Tonic? No, or am I making that up? No, Tonic they doesn't do websites, have, They think, do websites. Okay. I okay. I can't remember. There's one other one out there. Okay. Um, but. The Consistency Corner also has yes, a template. Yes, you have a, a template, template now. You did not have that then, Ruthie, or I would have bought yours, obviously. Yes, <laughs> I, have a I have a Canva template pack, which you can add on to the planning template. So my template, oh, there's, nice. two, there's actually two packs. There's okay. the planning templates that gets you all these questions I'm asking Kathy and the spreadsheet of the nine posts. And then there's the Canva templates where you get my four favorite designs. Nice. And then... What you can do is with those nine posts, depending upon which design you choose, you can move them around a little bit. Sure. If post number two makes more sense as the design for post number four, okay, yeah. flip them around. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think what's most important is post number one, post number five, and post number nine. Okay. Because in the journey, number one is like what people read first yes. when they hit your profile. Number nine is the, their last kind of final call to action. But number nine is what you post first when you're loading uh, your grid. Sure. Yes. So your feed is actually seeing post nine first and then post five because it's in the middle. In like the people are naturally yeah. going to gravitate towards that one. So you get your design figured out. You know, one of the things that we, you and I had kind of talked about was the way that they connect. One of the ways that I love to do that is to take the background. And so here's the difference between individual posts and a grid. 
So individual posts in Canva, you're designing each post one at a time. Yes. yes. When you design it as a grid, it's literally a grid and you oh, turn cool. the grid lines on in Canva so you can see where it'll slice up. Super and then when you cool. download it, it's one image and you put it into this tool called Pine Tools and Pine Tools will split it up for you. Oh, interesting. Okay. I did not realize all that. That's super interesting. Yes. And if you want to do any posts as carousel posts, you would design those separately. Okay. Kind of as individual posts. But then that individual grid, what you can do is you could take a solid color or an image or something and make it the background yes. of the whole thing. I've seen that before. Yes. So it really kind of connects and tells a story or yeah. uh, other things that it does is like little squares or graphic elements or mm -hmm. sometimes even words can kind of bleed over from one post to the next. Yeah. So they truly yeah. connect the grid. Yeah. Now I personally like to make them so that the post can stand alone on its own. And the reason that I want to do that is because I like to repurpose the content into LinkedIn and Facebook. Uh -huh. Now, depending upon your brand and your business, I've seen people do it and we can make it work where the individual photo on its own might not make any sense because yeah. it's part yeah. of a one big larger image. And that's okay. That might make more sense for your business and what your business goals are and where you're launching. Um, but those designs to create them all as individual posts, but have it be part of a larger puzzle, yeah. I think is really impactful. Yeah. Yeah. I love the way they look. I think it's super cool. Yeah. Okay. So that was a lot. Uh, this was a 45 minute strategy session. Yes. And typically if I do a 45 minute strategy session with someone, you fill out a form ahead of time. So some of this stuff is already done. Yes. And I'm not necessarily stopping to like explain and teach things the sure. way that I did with Kathy. Sure. So we truly would be able to get through the nine posts in those 45 minutes. Yes. Um, and one of the things that I can do in a strategy session with you, if you decide to do a one-on-one -on -one is decide if you're running multiple Instagrams, how to best leverage nine grids or three grids to connect them to each other how to use nine grids potentially for launches or non launches, depending upon what your business calendar looks like and just how to customize the overall experience for you. Right. So that it doesn't feel so overwhelming. And if you're right. like, you know what, Lizzie, I don't have time to do any of this myself. Can you just do it for me? Absolutely. Yes. You can apply for a done for you nine grid. And we'll yes. just do it. So you'll do the strategy. Just so everyone, just so I'm clear and everyone listening is clear. The strategy session could be something that somebody just bought your template and maybe they want to partner that with a strategy session, or maybe they bought a template somewhere else yeah. and they want to partner that with a strategy session or they want to refresh like me, you know? Um, so, okay. So I just wanted to be clear on who might be interested in that offer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That strategy okay. session, it's 45 minutes focused on your business okay. and we walk away and you have a plan. So like, okay. Kat and I, I'm going to email her all my notes. I'm going to email her this like outline of the grid that I did for her. Yep. And she's going to take it from there. She's going to go to Canva. She's going to work through it. We're going to do an Instagram live to reveal uh, yes, after she yes. puts her nine grid yes. up. Here's the other thing. You are 65% more likely to achieve a goal when you share it with a friend. So actually when yes. you download my planning templates, you get a little message on the thank you page that says, send me a DM on Instagram and tell me when you're going to post your nine grid. Ooh. I want to help hold you accountable. <laughs> because how many times yes. do we download these tools and then yes. they collect digital dust? Yes. And we don't do anything with Absolutely. Them. Absolutely. I love it. Okay. Well, this is good because I know myself. I mean, that's why I have an accountability group because I need accountability. I'm basically my own client, Ruthie. <laughs> I think we, I think we all are. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, well, this has been great. Thank you. Thank you so much. I look forward to getting your notes and working on this and doing yes. that Instagram live when, when it goes live. Yes. Thank you for being here. And if okay. you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to DM me on Instagram. We've got Kathy's um, profile linked in the show notes. So you can see her old Instagram. You can yep. see her new one when she gets it posted. Give her a follow, especially yep. if you're looking for support with health and fitness or health and fitness coaching. If you're yes. a health and fitness coach, you know? Yep. Um, and thanks again for being on Unfiltered Fridays. See ya.